Today, we're going to take a look a little bit more in depth and in detail on how we can modify the files that we created uh, from last Tuesday. I didn't end up getting a chance to uh, get a smaller stylus. I didn't actually get the shop bot uh, like I had hoped it would be to get the 16th inch stylus. I only have an eighth inch here at the house. Um, so uh, I will be visiting there tomorrow. I will uh, bring one home and at least get the it posted up after after the fact somehow to show the differences between a uh, smaller stylus versus a uh, thicker uh, stylus. So just so we could see the the difference in the detail. But what we created. Uh, last uh, Tuesday was two sets of a 2D tracing. And then um, we didn't actually see all of it, uh, but I did scan that Donald Duck uh, picture frame, the 3D surface, and demonstrated how that worked. Uh, so basically, just to refresh on how the 2D tracing works, is the, we, we set up the probe to where it triggers in X, Y, and Z, for the tracing, we're only using the X and Y. Uh, so the idea is the we move the stylus down to where it will, when the Y moves, it will trigger on the edge of the item. It backs off slightly and then does this arc motion move back into the part. And it basically works its way around uh, the part um, until it gets all the way back to the beginning. And every time the probe touches the surface of the item, it is recording the XY position of that point. We did scan in two types of files. Uh, one was polyline, uh, which is using the, for the 2D uh, tracing, uh, scanning or edge tracing. And then we use the ShopBot part file for the 3D scan. So we went to copy machine, The tools and then copy machine for the format. Uh, we had a it's first 3D object for the format. We chose to do the shopbot part file for the 2D tracing or the outline. The format here would be a polyline DXF. So what we have uh, created is. This is the MyScan, that's the default name. I should have named it something a little bit more logical uh, than what uh, MyScan is, because if you do a lot of them, you're gonna have a lot of MyScans, a lot of defaults. You're not gonna necessarily know what those are. We are uh, going to take a look at how to convert this ShopBot file into a 3D surface uh, that is done in the ShopBot software, going to the Tools menu, then we have a Probe to Surface Translator it is right there. We would select to open up the file that we want to scan, which is that uh, file right there. This time I'm going to uh, well, say OK to that. It gives us a grayscale image of that. Then we want to save that out as a DXF uh, surface. So it is the DXF surface file is similar to an STL. Um, and um, it is uh, going to be brought in as a 3D surface into vCarve Pro. So I clicked save, uh, gave it a name this time, and uh, takes a bit uh, to save the data. Once that is done, we would then be able to open up vCarve Pro and import this as a 3D model or a 3D component. So there is the uh, file that we just created, the DXF surface. And I'm going to kind of look at it in two places. Uh, we are going to use Aspire a little bit just to show you the benefits of how, why you would want Aspire. But before we get into that, we'll just start with the basic vCarve Pro. And create a new file. And I'm going to enter in the size of the relative size of the uh, scanning. So it was roughly two by three, um, half inch high. Say OK to that. So I'm going to the modeling tab and then going to the import a component or a 3D model. 
and there is Donald. Then we are going to get this uh, sheet that opens up to allow us to, uh, you know, orient around, change the size or the scale if we needed to. Um, at this point, we could also control where that sits down into the model. So as I scan and view what we have here, as I move this down and up, we see that some of it is getting shaded out and some of it is not. So the shading is not going to get imported. So this is a way to maybe uh, reduce the height of this just a little bit. If we want to bring in all of the model, I'm going to bring that all the way straight down, which is a total of almost a half of an inch. At that point, I'm gonna say, okay. And here it is brought in. Um, so using VCarve Pro, there isn't a whole lot that we could do to remove or modify the items of the surface that we do not want. But we are able to use a vector boundary to control the, or to contain the three-dimensional toolpath to be able to cut this out, to not be able to include or not to have the object uh, that we don't want, like the picture frame border here. So a lot of what I'm going to do today is a little bit trial and error um, because I'm going to be kind of experimenting with it. Um, I probably should have put a little bit more thought in laying it out. So you might see um, some mistakes, uh, some undos, uh, some redos, and uh, we're just going to see how, how it all plays out. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, to create a 3D tracing or a uh, toolpath for this, I could do come straight over here and create a uh, toolpath. But what it's going to do is it is going to create a toolpath for all of this model. I do not want to have any of this section up here uh, cut so or, or uh, in the uh, in the file. So to do that, uh, to get rid of that, I'm going to the drawing tab. And if you have done any kind of bitmap tracing, this is what we're going to do. We have a grayscale image of the 3D carving. I'm going to use the picture bird here to trace the bitmap or fit the vectors to a selected bitmap. So that bitmap is going to be of Donald here. Um, we could use the slider bar to try to get a better fit of what uh, we have. Um, I'm going to move it around. It uh, looks like I'm going to have to do it twice. Because um, I see, I'm looking at where his head is. If I do it there, I'm also picking up some of the picture frame in a little bit more than I want. I'm not getting the edge of his uh, face here. Um, I want to make sure I get that. So to get that, I need to make sure that this frame here is also uh, not being selected. So just using the slider bar and ticking it over to where it just barely becomes visible. I'm going to leave it right there and use a little bit of node editing for that. So I'm going to say preview and we can see that that has now previewed um, our vectors around this selected object. We'll select apply. I'm going to close. Now what we're able to do is use our vector editing tools to be able to get a, uh, a better fit uh, for this. So we could now see where it is in relation to the cutout. Um, so I'm gonna first ungroup this. So when we did this tracing, it came in as a grouped object. I'm going to select the tracing and type the letter U to ungroup that. And uh, just going to really use node editing at this point, typing the letter N for node editing and going to cut away some of the items that we do not need or want. And to do that, I, I know the shortcuts uh, for this. And I'll point those out right there so you can see that I cut that away. I want to do the same thing for this object here. And what I'm doing to be able to cut that is typing the letter C for cut. And I know it's the letter C from when I right click, I notice that it says cut vector. 
and do the same thing on the opposite side over here and cut that away. So it doesn't look like anything has changed, uh, but now notice when I select, um, whoa. Try that again. Go in here and um, right click and cut the vector. Ah, so it's still cut. So let me uh, point out what's happening. So this is a closed shape. I did cut the vector on that point. Um, so when I go into node editing and uh, move this node out of the way, we see it is separate. Uh, so what I really uh, should do and need to do is get rid of another section of what I do not want uh, where I wanted to cut. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom of this foot and cut vector there. So now we have that in two separate parts. Selecting the top side and removing that. Uh, the same thing here. And just removing all the little bits that we don't need um, for this. Let's see what we have here for note editing. I did cut that because the green dot is there. Um, Clicking off of it to click and select only the 3D uh, view just to see where his rest of his face is coming in. I don't think we have the option to be able to uh, do the object properties. Let's just see object properties. We do. That's great. So I'm going to use this uh, fading here uh, off to the move it to the right so that I'm able to really see where the edge of his face is into the differences here. Um, so it is not selected right now. So, but what I could do here is selecting that. Again, node editing. And I'm really going to come way down here to this node and select it to trim down here and get rid of that whole section altogether. Then using node editing, or I'm sorry, line tool, I'm just going to manually trace around and then node editing to smooth this out around here. And again, I know the shortcuts um, here. I'm just typing the letter S uh, for smooth. Um, and that is uh, one that uh, is good to get to know. And basically, I'm just going around and fitting these vectors or this node as close to Donald as I can. Uh, now, I'm going to come back out of this. There's a couple ways that we could work with this. Um, one is maybe, uh, let's see, where does he start to go off? Right around here. At this point here, I'm going to cut the node at that location and then just select all the objects that I want to have joined together. Join, join. With those two selected, I'm going to close with a curve that connected those together. And, and basically, you just want to go through the objects here and create vectors that are as close to the edge of the 3D model that you would like to have. For this one, I could use the bitmap tracing again um, and trim out the objects here. I'm just going to offset, though. Uh, outward, um, but this is a open vector, uh, so it is uh, right or left. Uh, before I do that, I see that vector is going all the way up and around to help find that a little bit easier than a node edit and select cut uh, on that line and get rid of some of that section. So now we only have the line and vector right here. So to offset this, the starting point, we notice that uh, we have this black dot right here. That is like the starting point of this vector. So if you imagine yourself standing on that, 
offsetting an open vector, we want it to go to the right. If the black dot in the starting point was down here, we'd really want it offset to the left. So to do this, I'm gonna guess maybe a 16th of an inch, that might be too much, um, but that's why we have undo. That was just a little too much. So I'm gonna undo with that still selected. I'm gonna cut that in half to 03 and delete that original vector. At this point, I just wanna know to edit a little bit to cut this apart and to be able to join those together. Selecting both of those objects and then I'm going to close those with a smooth shape. So we now have a complete outline or vector outline of Donald Duck that we could use to contain the 3D toolpath. So with this done, I'm going to go over to the toolpaths tab and select to do a, I'm just going to go straight to a finishing toolpath just so we can see what's going to happen. So selecting this, the first thing it wants to ask is fitting the model within the um, material size. So the material thickness is 0.5 inches. Let me cancel this because that's, that's odd to have that at five inches. Yeah, look at that, 0.5, not five. So we'll say okay to that. And uh, again, when you come into the finishing model, the first time that it, um, you bring it up, if you haven't set it before, I'm gonna close this, if you haven't clicked and haven't set this object, this lighter brown section is the, like the model cross section of the area that it's going to take up within the thickness of our half inch material. So we see if we cut this when we're all done, it's only going to have a little bit, you know, a sixteenth of an inch material left uh, down below. So I'm going to leave that set to the top, scroll down and select OK, going to the finishing toolpath. Now this is the reason that we created that vector um, boundary around our 3D object. Um, selecting the Donald, and I can see I should have uh, maybe modified a little bit more around his foot, but I think you guys get the idea for that. So machining limit boundary. Right now, uh, by default, it has the model boundary, meaning that it is going to be cut the whole rectangle that we see that is that grayscale image. That is not what we want. Uh, the material is going to completely carve out all of the material but we created a vector, a selected vector to help contain this. And at this point, let's come down and select calculate. I'm gonna come back and visit uh, this selected level. I don't know if I've ever used that, so uh, we'll experiment this a little bit. So I'm gonna click calculate. All right, so what we got there was a message that one or more of our bounding vectors is open, it is not a closed shape. So I'm gonna right click and do a selection of all open vectors and it selected that. Um, let's investigate a little bit more going into node editing and I'm gonna look for the green start point. Well, there's the green start point and sure enough, it is an open vector. So I'm gonna select that and use the close with a straight line which just connects those together Now with that border boundary selected, I should be able to click calculate and it is going to do its thing. A preview what this looks like. I don't think we're gonna get it looking all that great uh, because it looks like I did not pay attention to what bit I was using. So to stop a preview, I'm gonna click the red button right here and it will stop to go back in and modify the shape of this uh, or the toolpath, uh, I'm going to double click on the finishing toolpath. But before I do that, I just wanna point out what is happening uh, here with this model. 
and why it's not like going all the way out here because our vector that we drew is all the way out around this area here but the toolpath is not going out to that section the reason for that is the width of the cutter or the edge of the cutter is coming out to that point uh, so it is hitting the boundary or the edge of that bit is hitting that boundary before we go we'll investigate how to uh, kind of modify that some it looks like we may have forgotten to go around his uh, cap hat there as well but anyway uh, so double clicking the finishing tool path selecting an end mill um, or a bit which was an end mill uh, we want to select a ball nose with a 10 percent step over and let's go ahead and select that and see if it looks any different um, in the tool path i'm just going to come straight down and calculate well, it looks like it uh, maybe went extended out a little bit farther. Um, going to close this preview just so we could see the uh, finishing tool path over top of the model and just uh, kind of investigating and seeing if it uh, looks like it's not so bad. Um, might need to step it down to a 16th inch, but this time I'm going to click uh, preview the tool paths to see what this looks like. We can already see that it's a much smoother uh, tool path than uh, it was originally. And if you were wondering why it's taking so long, so I'm going to stop this and show you why it's uh, taking so long. Going up to the uh, tool paths in the preview simulation, I have it set to the maximum. I'm going to just set it back to the standard uh, to help speed this preview up and preview all tool paths. Uh, it looks okay, but not great. Uh, I mean, you can definitely see what's happening and what it looks like, but that's not great. Um, so we really need to go with a smaller bit to get into some more of the detail of what he is. So I'm going to just do that by double clicking, selecting another bit. I'm going to step it down to a 16th inch ball nose and maybe reduce the uh, step over, apply and select. Well, cleaned it up a little bit better, but still not not great. So this is why uh, we might want to take a look at a spire um, or a couple of things that I'm seeing is not cutting deep around here. Um, I'm going to turn on the toolpath just to see what's going on here. And close the preview. And yeah, so it's just not dropping down into here. And the reason for that, that is uh, because of our bounding uh, vector that we have. So we're gonna double click in here and change the boundary offset. So I'm gonna offset it outward um, by a little bit. And honestly, I always forget, is it a positive number or a negative number? Well, the, the easiest and best way to find out is try it see what happens uh, so just to see what happens i'm going to type in a larger number and click calculate to see which way that goes yes so it went outward so now we can see that it cut a little bit farther out uh, than what we originally had double clicking back in there going to reduce that down not to an eighth of an inch but down to a sixteenth of an inch and preview what that looks like. So you can see how we got a little bit more definition out of that now. Um, another thing that uh, we want to do is remove all of the material out from around the edge of uh, Donald. And I am going to change the material thickness because a half of an inch uh, material is not going to leave enough material 
to do anything more with it. So we're gonna go into the job setup, change the thickness from half inch to three quarter. Select okay, then change that. So tool paths would need to be recalculated. And now with this border selected, I'm going to draw a rectangle out to the extents of our material. And I'm going to use the rectangle and our border vectors to create a pocket. Uh, and just going to use an eighth inch uh, pocketing. And uh, let's start out with uh, 0.49. And now just run a preview of all the finishing tool paths. So now we've removed all of the material out from around it and all we are here is left with uh, Donald Duck. Um, there's a few things that I could see we might not need to go as deep uh, as we uh, might think uh, to get some of this, uh, but uh, yeah, it's not looking too bad uh, for a, uh, using an eighth inch stylus that uh, just wasn't really enough to pick up the detail that was needed. But that is uh, kind of the basics of bringing in the model and um, being able to toolpath it. Um, let's just expand this size just a little bit, see if we can't make a different type of uh, frame rather than having that round frame. Let's see if we can't make a, a picture frame that is uh, a rectangular shaped. Uh, so I'm going to change the model size and I'm going to go eight in the X, and eight in the Y just to give us a little bit more room. We can select everything we have here. I'm gonna move that up. Now, since I've moved him, we will have to recalculate tool paths and I am going to delete this pocketing tool path. So at this point, I'm going to delete this border here as well. Actually, let's just move it, shift it over a little bit. Um, that's selected. Let's offset that outwards by 0.5 inches. So now we have two sets of vectors that um, really we need to define the path that we need. So two things that we need. We need to be able to cut the inside of this out. Uh, also need to be cutting the outside out, but we also still need to have the vector completely surrounding Donald to be able to contain the 3D view. So to help organize and help keep everything straight, I'm going to right click, select that, that selected vector, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to copy this to a new layer and I'm going to call it Donald and save. Now let me call it something new. Copy to new layer and So we've now got two vectors directly on top of one another. Um, so I'm going to shut the layer two off and we can even shut, uh, you know, Donald off here. So now we're only working with the 2D view. I'm going to come to the drawing, use the scissors and trim away the sections of the frame that we would not want So now coming back to the layers, and I could turn both of those on again just to see what we have. So basically we have separated. So I have the border 
that the finishing tool path is still able to use to contain the 3D model. Then we have the frame itself that we could uh, cut out. And uh, I also wanna create maybe a couple more vectors to be able to pocket out all of this frame uh, to be at a different depth. So uh, selecting the frame pocket, going to offset outwards by, I'm just gonna go just a little bit by an eighth of an inch. So knowing that we had both these objects selected, notice that one went to the inside and the other went to the outside. Well, VCurve uh, Pro is kind of smart enough to know that when they are both selected, one goes one way, one goes the other, where the inside is between these two selected vectors. So what we have here is enough vectors, I think, to be able to create a cutout picture frame rather than a circle with Donald on it, we got a rectangle. So going to double click the finishing tool path, selecting Donald. The reason why it didn't become and stay selected is because I shifted it off to a new layer and really it became a new uh, vector. So with that selected, I'm going to come down, calculate that. Selecting the outside here, we're going to use a profile toolpath. Going to cut down to, yeah, that worked uh, the last time. We could maybe, uh, let's see what happens when we go three eighths of an inch. I'm going to leave that same eighth inch cutter pocket. Shut these off so I could see what's going on here. Selecting these two objects here. Going to do a profile toolpath. I'm going to select the cutter for this. I selected an eighth inch, which I probably used a quarter inch, but that means a tool change uh, or three tool changes for this, and I don't want that. So just doing that and setting this down to a little bit thicker than three quarters of an inch. I do want to add a tab or two. help hold everything together so it doesn't come flying off the table. A little close. Get this warning would cut all the way through and I might surprise myself if this actually all comes together and works. So I'm gonna select everything here coming into the preview tool paths the preview all toolpaths looks like. Uh-oh, it didn't work. Like I said, I was going to surprise myself. What happened? Well, um, what happened here is we need another set of vectors to contain this pocketing. Um, so let me uh, preview them individually so you can see what, what really happened here. So I'm going to reset this preview. Going to run the 3D finishing toolpath. That's only preview that visible toolpath. Well, there is Donald. He's happy as could be. I'm going to run the profile, which goes around the outside. Uh, preview that. Uh, that's looking okay. But now, when we run this pocketing toolpath, it plows right through Donald. He's no longer happy. Uh, so, we're going to uh, preview what that did, and we can see that it just wiped him out. So to uh, create that, what we really need to have is another set of bounding vectors that we are able to use to contain that pocketing toolpath to where Donald does not get cut out. I'm going to cheat a little bit here by um, selecting that border and then also selecting the Donald himself. Um, it's maybe not the most efficient um, way of doing it, the, the end process is going to be exactly the same. So this is uh, the case where I am going to have the machine take a little bit longer to cut this out um, versus me taking a little bit more time fixing the drawing to where the machine could be more accurate. So the end result is going to be exactly the same. 
um, if I you know trimmed this away uh, here and connected it here to pocket around here, we are going to get a more efficient tool path, meaning that uh, the machine is going to cut and get the job done just a little bit faster. Um, but at the same time, to make that happen, I have to spend a little bit more time here modifying the drawing to make that happen. So even though I'm saving time on the machine, I'm losing time by having to modify uh, the drawing. So selecting Donald there, gonna come down and calculate. And this time I will reset all the preview. And we can see that uh, that is no longer going around Donald. Um, so let's do a preview all toolpaths. And there we go. Um, so we have somewhat of a picture frame uh, from Donald that we uh, put in there. Um, there is a little bit more offset work that we need to do around uh, his uh, face here uh, looks like we are cutting into it somehow or some way, um, but basically that is just kind of digging in and figuring out what is happening there. So to figure that out, I'm going to select the pocket here. Ah, well there, uh, we can see that pocketing toolpath is not completely going around uh, Donald there. So uh, to create that, I might come into node edit. Oh, wow, look at all those nodes. Well, let's uh, simplify it a little bit more by uh, just doing a cut on both the top and bottom and removing that using the line tool. Just drawing a line farther out and again, it, not looking for this to be the most efficient, uh, just uh, a little bit faster getting this drawn. Um, this time the pocketing toolpath is, have this one selected as well. That looks like it was the cut pattern. Oh no, is it that easy? There we go. So right there. So it, it's, it's a challenge uh, to find mistakes uh, on, on what's happened here. Um, so I, I really didn't need to modify this outside pocketing toolpath because I didn't solve the problem. Um, what has happened here, um, and I'll uh, preview this uh, so we could uh, see the previewing once more, reset and preview all the toolpaths. We can see we've lost some of Donald. Uh, when we cut around uh, the outside, it cut into his, his mouth here, um, cut his leg a little shorter. Well, what has happened is I didn't pay attention. And this is when the most mistakes happen, is when you just click through and you know become confident in what you do and what you know, and you're gonna very easily make a mistake. Uh, so I'm going to double click this profile one toolpath, which is the toolpath that cuts this out. And notice that I have the machining vectors to be cut directly on the line. So what that means is the center of the cutter is going to follow the selected line. So if I'm cutting with an eighth inch cutter, that means that half of the cutter is a sixteenth of an inch on this side of the line and in here. So we are using that profile toolpath to cut into what we don't want to cut into. So I'm going to change that to cut onto the outside. I'm going to come down and click calculate. Reset all of the preview and preview all visible toolpaths. Oh, only some of them are visible. Reset, preview all visible toolpaths. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. Um, we have some height uh, issues uh, to deal with uh, right here. That is a couple places that we could modify that. Uh, one is the vector of the containment vector for the 3D finishing toolpath is uh, coming out just a little bit too far. Um, we can see that by flipping the 3D model component back on. We can see how it's come out here a little bit. 
So coming in here to node editing, um, again, I'll do a, just a sweep select of some of these nodes, get rid of those, move that up, and maybe smooth that out a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going, we're going to find out. So double clicking that 3D toolpath to recalculate. It looks like it in May is taking care of it. Uh, we still have a little bit here on the edge, uh, but we'll just see how that uh, possibly corrects that. Reset and preview all visible toolpaths again. And there we can see how it took care of it on the bottom where I uh, corrected that, but we still have the issue uh, to correct around the the heel uh, of in there. So we could you know do the same thing, node edit, um, you know, select all of those, and just bump those in just a little bit. reset the previews and do a preview all once again. There we go. Got it cleaned up a little bit more. We're still a little bit deep right there, but uh, I think you get the idea of what is happening and how we could introduce a 3D object. Um, in this case, it was a 3D object that we use the digitizing probe for, but any um, 3D object, any clip art, uh, is going to work just the same way as uh, what we did uh, to use uh, this here. Um, so uh, the next thing that uh, I want to take a look at, which is uh, far simpler than what we just did there, and uh, I'm actually quite surprised that it all worked out just right. Um, always nervous when I go into something like this, uh, not running at least a trial run to see how it uh, is going to work. Um, sometimes I think it's going to work the way I think it's going to work and it doesn't turn out to be that way and have to end up like rethinking and re uh, coming at it with a different approach. Now what we're going to do is uh, preview a little bit about what Aspire is and why you might want to have Aspire, especially if you're doing a lot of uh, digitizing or making modifications. So the first thing that um, I have here is a, uh, let's go ahead and start a new version of uh, Donald. Um, so this is uh, kind of him already out of the oven uh, that we've uh, modified it just a little bit. So I'm gonna create a new version uh, of Aspire here, uh, opening it up, um, bringing in our same DXF file that we created from the probe to surface translator, going to the modeling tab. Notice on Aspire, we have a few more options on the modeling tab than we do in vCard Pro. So clicking to import the model. So it's really brought in just the same way uh, and looks the same as we did in uh, VCarve Pro. But one of the features that we have uh, within the um, Aspire is this uh, sculpting uh, tool here. So I'm going to select Donald, which is the uh, model. Now let's, I want to see one thing, see if we can't do this first. Um, so I brought him in. Um, we already created the vectors uh, for Donald. Um, so I'm going to select that and do a control copy, control C, coming over to Aspire, and I think this works, control V. Mm, I thought we were able to go from uh, one to the other. But anyway, um, Let's just do a uh, quick tracing of him. I'm not going to worry too much about um, getting it exact like I did earlier. Let's just uh, say 
it is there. We'll come down and do a preview. Now what this uh, is going to allow us to do is use these vectors not to contain the model um, or the tool pathing, but will allow us to trim away everything outside of that. So right now we have this object selected and we can see everything it's opened right here. So what we really want to do is remove everything that is inside of that component. So I'm going to select the component, select the tracing, and remove everything that is inside of there. And we've just now removed all of the model that is was inside of those uh, selected vectors. Notice I didn't quite get all of it, so I'm going to do a Control Z going into node editing, just do a sweep select here. Not a sweep select, doing those, gonna bump that down a little bit and do the same thing to remove everything that is inside. So I also need to select that. So we have now Donald with only Donald, nothing else. So we were able to crop everything else out of it. The other nice feature that we have here is the sculpting tool. So it wants to select a component. So I'm gonna select Donald and use the sculpting tool and going to use this smoothing feature. Um, the mouse is uh, able to increase or decrease the radius of this. Uh, little uh, brush, I'm going to call it, and then it just kind of go over top of this with the mouse button held down. Um, so we can see how that is uh, smoothing, getting smoothed out. We could um, change the strength of this. Just, I'm gonna take this to the extreme so we can see what happens uh, to his uh, shirt right here. We'll see how that uh, kind of blends um, right inside. And we really um, kind of got that quite a bit smooth in there now. Um, Being careful not to quite smooth, I still want that to be a defined edge. We can also cut away um, some of the areas here. So rather than um, smoothing it out, we could remove. And uh, removing is, uh, One where it change that and maybe define his grip here a little bit better. Once that is done, we could then take the smoothing tool and come back in and kind of smooth all of that out and help define the, um, the model just a little bit more. 3D modeling in Aspire is, uh, you know, a tedious uh, process. Um, but it is a uh, handy item to have. could also use that uh, cut tool um, or the remove tool um, to add a little bit more of a definition uh, around his waist uh, right here. Um, setting to the remove. And then coming back in with the smooth tool
that just kind of blend, blend that out. There's also the uh, smudge, uh, which I don't use uh, too often. Um, that is uh, maybe we need to just kind of push some of this material around like, uh, you know, it's like clay. Uh, just kind of reshifting and pushing that uh, around. And again, the smoothing uh, allows us to come in and smooth that out. So that is a, a little bit of, um, uh, you know, a spire. And then, um, this, you know, the smoother we're able to get this, um, and the more definition we're able to get this, the smoother uh, the finishing cut is, is going to, to look. Because, you know, the cutter is really just going to follow um, the, uh, the model and the path of the model. So I'm, I'm not smoothing the toolpath. I haven't created the toolpath yet. I am only smoothing the model and modifying the model. So yeah, no, I have not created any toolpaths yet. Uh, we can see that here on the right side, no toolpaths have been created and it is uh, the actual model that is being uh, modified here. Uh, and this is the, uh, the benefits of uh, aspire to be able to uh, modify and manipulate the uh, 3D, 3D surfaces. So what started out to be a fairly rough uh, model um, and uh, we were able to uh, smooth that out just a little bit with uh, you know, the, the functions of aspire and with a little bit more work I would probably be able to get a fairly clean and well-defined version of Donald without having to use the smaller stylus um, here. The other thing that does help uh, quite a bit with a um, sculpting and using uh, Aspire as a welcome tablet, uh, basically it just allows you to uh, use a, uh, a pen uh, rather than a mouse uh, that is able to control uh, you're able to be a little bit more uh, detailed with, with that uh, being able to come in and just select that rather than controlling the mouse is a little hard to get that around. So using a pen or a stylus allows uh, easier flow um, of the line. So if I wanted to remove some of that area here, it's a little bit easier to control it with a uh, tablet uh, and a pen rather than the mouse, as you can see, I'm you know, sort of kind of controlling that now with the uh, mouse, or I'm sorry, with the pen rather than the tablet. Uh, but now I'll just kind of switch to the mouse to show, you can see it's not as easily manipulated there. So that's about what I have for today. Um, we do have the uh, 2D models there, uh, but we did go over that on uh, Tuesday. They're basically just DXF vectors. Uh, at this point, they're no different than uh, what we uh, would normally import. Um, there was one thing that Tom reminded me, I'm thankful that he reminded me uh, to show, was um, I was having a problem with uh, one of those uh, last Tuesday about um, not being able to uh, do the uh, uh, the fit curves uh, to vector. So I'm just going to import one of those and uh, show you what the fix was. Um, so let's do a 2D scan and there is the uh, model or the uh, tracing that we had there. And um, Tuesday what we were, I was trying to do was uh, reduce the number of nodes uh, that we had here. So node editing that is the, the resolution of the model. There is a feature within VCarve Pro and Aspire that is called Curve Fit that takes um, the selected curves. I want to replace the current ones. We could either replace all of those nodes with circular curves or the Bezier curves um, and preview this. And so you can see that there are far less nodes uh, than we had. Now, the fix and what wasn't working, this 
feature was not working uh, on Tuesday. It only added a couple extra nodes there. Um, well, apparently the fix is don't do anything, come back to it again and try it again and it just works. Um, so I, I don't have an explanation of what I was doing differently on Tuesday than I did today, but um, I'm certain it was something. I just don't know what it is. Uh, that function is working just fine for me today. All right, well, that's what we have uh, for uh, this week. Everyone have a good day. We'll see you next week.